Hey, welcome to Bill Sky, the C++ guy. This is our first video that we're actually going to do something. And what we're going to do in this video is install all the development tools needed to, to write C++ programs under Windows. Now, you could do something very, very easy. You could go in ahead and download Visual Studio 2022 or the latest version, install the tools you need from there. The problem with that, though, is that it's not really compatible with all the other operating systems. Visual C++ is really a different compiler uses a lot of Windows only things and if you're more interested in being compatible across operating systems which as a developer you should be because now you have a larger customer base I would really suggest that you do it this way so what we're gonna do is we're gonna install MSYS2 which is a great package manager to allow you to install every compiler you need it also installs a really nice command line in environment uh, much like Linux which you'll get to appreciate as as time moves on so let's go ahead and download MSYS2. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up my browser. Now this is a brand new Windows 11. I haven't had time to install a browser like Firefox or something. So let's go to msys2.org. And you're gonna to wanna to come down here to download the installer. Just go ahead and click that little button. Let the download complete, and then once the download is completed, we're going to go ahead and then run that installer. Now, this browser is kind of weird. It shows that it's installed it all, but okay, so now it's downloaded it. All right, great. So let's go ahead and close that, bring up our downloads folder, and there's MSYS2. Go ahead and just double click on that. Click Next. Go ahead and keep the default. This is going to go on your installation drive, your Windows installation drive of C colon backslash. Backslash is the root, it's the very top level. There's no it's, there's no folders above it. And the name of the, the directory will be msys64. Just go ahead and leave that alone. Uh, default that, and then click the install, and the install process begins. Go ahead and let that finish, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up the development environment with all the development tools that you need. Okay, once the installation is done, leave that run msys2 now checked and click finish, and you're gonna get this command line. Now, a lot of you are like, oh God, a command line, why in the world is he making me do that? Well, as a real developer, a really true developer, you're gonna use the command line a lot, just as if you were a, a server administrator or something like that. So you're gonna have to get used to this, just deal with it. And it actually is gonna save you a lot of time over 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 time. So let's type in some commands. I'm going to type pacman dash capital S lowercase yu. And what this is going to do is it's going to download all the all the catalogs. It's going to make sure that everything is up to date. I'm going to say yes, proceed with the installation. It's going to ask me one more time if I want to continue. I'm going to say yes. And now it ends. That's kind of weird, right? What it did was it just installed everything you need to get started. So I'm going to go to search. I'm going to type msys. I'm going to start the msys2 msys program one more time. And we've got a few more things to do here. So let's type pacman-su. That'll make sure everything gets updated, downloaded, and updated. Yes, I want to download it all. Let that installation complete. Then I'm going to type in another command, pacman-s-needed base devel. Now I will put all these commands into the description of this video so you don't have to type them all in by hand. And you can see it's installing a whole lot of development libraries, development tools. All right, we've got some more things to do. Let's install the what they call the MinGW keychain. That is a set of tools on Windows that that allows you to use the open source GCC, G++, and that. And the way you do that is pacman-s mingww64 x86-64 toolchain. Press enter, yes. And now it's gonna go and install all of the tools that you need to be able to code in both C and C++. And we'll go ahead and let that finish. It's gonna take a few minutes. 
And when we return, we got a few more commands to do, no big deal. Again, I'll put all these commands in the description of the video so you don't have to zoom in and try to figure out what it is that I was doing here. So we've got a few more things to do. Let's type pacman-s development. And we're gonna say enter, yes. And that's gonna go ahead and download a whole bunch of stuff. This is gonna install things like also like Fortran and all kinds of development tools that you can use within this GCC environment now, or within this MSYS environment. Now, you're not gonna to have to develop all your code in the command line, but what you're doing is you're downloading the compiler. And integrated development environments like Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio, Eclipse, which is what we're gonna be doing here, those are not the compilers, those are simply the integrated development environments on top of the compilers. And even Visual Studio 2022, when you download Visual Studio, the user interface that you're seeing is the integrated development environment. However, the compiler is going to be Visual C++. So there are command line components to every compiler out there. That's just the way it is. We're going to go ahead and, and do the Eclipse here. Now, Visual Studio Code is a great little editor. A lot of you like it. The problem with Visual Studio Code is it's not very easy for beginners. It's not great for C and C++. You've got to make some changes to the JSON just to be able to allow you to have multiple source files. So we'll get to all of that. We'll make sure that uh, it's, this is as easy as possible for you. And then if you want to figure out how to use Visual Studio Code later on, makes sense to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a few other things. I'm going to say pacman-s vim. Vim is a really nice uh, command line editor, so we're going to go ahead and install that. We're going to say pacman-s nasm. Nasm is the assembler. If you look at my assembler language channel playlist, you can see what you can do with that. I'm going to also install a nice little like graphical editor called nano. All right, so we've installed everything. Now, we still can't see GCC or G++, and that's because we're in the wrong window. So I'm going to type exit out of this, and now I'm going to go down here to search. I'm going to type msys, and what we want to do is we want to pick the, the mingw, the msys2 mingw64, and from there I'm going to type gcc, and you can see we get a different display. And now GCC is installed, let's type G++, let's type G Fortran, I'm not sure, if, yep, even Fortran's installed. Uh, NASM is installed. Now, if for some reason you want to install the 32-bit version of the MinGW compiler, you have to come down here to search, type MSYS, and you have to go to the MSYS MinGW32. And let's see if we've got GCC there already. Yep, GCC's not there. So if I want to install GCC for some reason in the 32-bit libraries, pacman-s GCC. And we're going to go ahead and install that. Now, 32-bit and 64-bit. 32-bit is for older computers. You may still want to be able to do that. 64-bit is for the newer and the newest computers out there. You definitely want to install that. We're not going to really mess with the 32-bit very much, so this really isn't necessary. But I always like to show you because you may have to. You may have to have multiple development environments for 32-bit and 64-bit. There's still a lot of 32-bit code out there. And we'll go ahead and let that complete installation. There it is. Let's see if we can install G++, or maybe it already installed it. Let's type G++. Yep, so the GCC install also installed the G++. Uh, Let's go ahead and do the NASM. So we can have both the 32-bit and the 64-bit versions of NASM. All right. Now, there's, we're done. That's, we've installed the compiler. Now, for your Eclipse or any, any integrated development environment to be able to access the compiler, you have to set the system path. So the system path tells the operating system where your programs are located on the hard drive or on your SSD. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to bring up, which I already had it up, I'm going to go ahead and, and right click, or I'm going to click on this PC. We can see our C drive. 
I'm going to right click on this PC, click properties. And then from properties, I'm going to go over here to advanced system settings, click on that. I'm going to go to environment variables. And now we want to change the path for our operating system so it can find those new so we can find those new programs that we just installed. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to double click on path and I'm going to click new. Now from there I need to type in a a directory entry. So I'm going to type c colon backslash msys64. That's where we installed everything. mngw64 backslash bin. And I'm going to press enter. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and collect and click okay okay and okay and then I can close my system properties now how can we test this to see if it works well I'm gonna go down here to search I'm gonna type CMD there's the command prompt I'm gonna press open go ahead and open that and I'm gonna type GCC and you can see now the GCC compiler is available from the command prompt G++ is, is available as well and that's because we set that path variable so I'm gonna exit out of that now let's install the integrated development environment and I'm going to bring up my browser again. I'm going to go to eclipse.org. Okay, and I'm going to now on the top right, I'm going to click download. I'm going to scroll down here to the download packages. Now, the reason I'm going to download packages is because I want, I want to install a version of Eclipse that's going to also be compatible with Java so over here on the right, I'm going to Eclipse IDE for Java developers. I'm going to go over here on the right to Windows, click x86 underscore 64, click download, and now that will download our Eclipse for Java, and then we're going to add the C and C++ stuff, which is a lot easier than downloading the C version of Eclipse and then downloading all the Java stuff. That's why I do it that way. Okay, it's done. I'm now going to go to my Windows user, my, my username creatively is Windows user, I so open up my home folder. Now this is not an install program, this is actually just a zip file. So I'm going to double click on that, and there's the folder for Eclipse. I'm going to open up my home folder once again, and I always like to put everything in documents, so I'm going to put it under documents. Now really, because you want everybody to be able to access Eclipse that's logged into this computer, and if you're, only, if you're the only one, you can just drag this folder to your documents folder. But I like everybody to have access to it. So I'm going to click on this PC, local C drive, and I'm just going to drag the Eclipse folder to my C drive. I didn't drag it into any of these other folders. I just dragged it to my C drive, and that's the installation. So let it finish copying, and then we will go ahead and bring up Eclipse, and we will actually install the C and C++ tools and then we'll be done with the installation. It's actually very simple. All right, the copy's all done, so let's go ahead and close my zip file over here. And we're on my C drive. If you're if you moved it into your documents folder, that's fine. There's not a problem with that. I like putting everything on the root so everybody can get to it. I'm going to double click on Eclipse. Now, I don't want to have to go into my C drive every time to run Eclipse. So what I'm going to do is, there's the Eclipse application right here. I'm going to hold down my right mouse button and drag that to my desktop and then let go of my mouse button and I'm going to say create shortcut here. So now I never have to go looking for it, it's always on my desktop. So let's go ahead and double click, double click the Eclipse shortcut. This is the 2023 June version of Eclipse, that's fine. Eclipse runs on Java so it downloaded everything it needed. I went ahead and clicked launch. Now we'll talk about what that workspace is uh, later on in the videos, but just say that just go ahead and click the the default, and I'll show you what Eclipse created. All right, so there's Eclipse. Now it looks kind of commercial. I can click on the hide button up here, and you can actually see your integrated development environment. It asks you to donate. I would actually do that. You know, I donate five dollars a month to the Eclipse organization because Eclipse is used all over the industry and they don't get any money for it. People are spending time. I like to do that. All right, so I'm gonna go up here to help 
and I'm go actually I'm going to go to window and I'm going to go to preference and I'm going to turn off always run in background and then I'm going to click apply and close now I'm going to go to help and I'm going to click install new software now under work with I'm going to drop down that work with and I'm going to collect click on all available sites I'm going to expand this window. Now you're going to be blown away by the amount of stuff that's out there for Eclipse. It's just huge. Developers have developed Eclipse. And this is these are all the different, this isn't even all of them, but this is a lot of the different things that you can do or install with Eclipse. What we're going to do is I'm going to go down here to Programming Languages, expand it, and I'm going to just click on the C and C++ Development Tools. That's it. You don't have to click on anything else. I'm going to click Next. And Next, I'm going to Agree. And click Finish. And it goes ahead and downloads all of the Eclipse features to be able to support that language. There's programming languages, Go, PHP, Fortran. It just includes almost everything. And just go ahead and let that install. And there's one last thing I want to do. You know, it's not necessary, but it's really nice. It's a convenience. It's called Easy Shell. It allows you to create, to open a terminal from within Eclipse to actually see your code, to see your, your executable programs and your files very easily. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As soon as the C and C++ is done installing, we're going to do the Easy Shell. All right, once the installation is done, it asks me would I like to restart. I'm going to click no because I want to install one more thing. I'm going to go up to help Eclipse Marketplace. Instead of install new software, I'm going to go to Eclipse Marketplace. And under find or to the right of find, I'm going to type Easy Shell and press enter. The very first entry is Easy Shell. I'm going to say install. I'm going to accept the license. No big deal. They're not going to take your firstborn or anything. Now it's going to ask me, do I trust the repositories where this is located? I'm going to click Select All and say Trust Selected. I'm going to click Select All again, Trust Selected, and now it installs it. Now one of the things you might want to do is you might want to go up here and say hello, Help, Hello, Help, and check for updates. And you want to do this periodically because Eclipse, the Eclipse Foundation will make changes to Eclipse, fix bugs and things like that. Um, it looks like there is an update already, so I'm going to click Next and Finish, and it's going to go ahead and install the update. Once that update is done, you can go ahead and click on Restart Now. And what we're going to do next is we're going to create our first C++ project. Now this whole procedure other than the compiler install, the whole Eclipse procedure is the same for every operating system. So we'll go ahead and click Launch. Let Eclipse start up. Now, after you do an update or you install a bunch of stuff, Eclipse takes a little bit longer to bring up. So, all right, cool. So everything looks good. So I'm going to click on Workbench. And now we're on our Workbench. So let's create our very first Eclipse C++ project. I'm going to go to File new and I'm going to come down here to other I'm going to expand C and C++ click C++ project next I'm going to give it a name my first C++ now I do not like spaces in project or file names you don't have to listen to me but I'm telling you spaces in, in, in projects and file names can be a problem some operating systems handle it different than others. If you don't put any spaces in, I like to use camel case. So the first letter of every word is uppercase and the rest are lowercase. If you must use a space, use an underscore. I also don't like using special characters. And as you become a more experienced developer, you're going to find that's really good advice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Hello World Project and MinGWGCC. Click Next. You can put your author, your copyright. I'm going to click Next. Now this is kind of interesting. If It's going to create basically two sub-projects under your project. 
a debug version and a release version. The debug version is something that you will use to debug your code, make sure it works and everything before you send it off to the customers. Release means it, it doesn't include debug information, so it's gonna be smaller, maybe a little bit faster. I always like to turn off release and then finish. And the next thing it does is it says, would you like to open the perspective for C and C++? I say, yes, open that perspective. Now, every language has its own little caveats. That's the C++ pers uh, perspective. So there you go. So there's our very first prog project. I'm going to click on the little hammer and sip, or the little hammer right there. That's the build. Down here in the console, you're going to see the first statement right here is the compile statement. Again, it's command line. This you it's that Eclipse has hidden the command line from you. The second statement is the link. So if you don't know very much about that, I'm gonna to try to put a a link in, in the description about what compiling and linking is all about. So you can see, but whenever you build an application, you have two steps, compile and link. And now I'm gonna go up and I'm just gonna press the play button. And oops, this is interesting. Because I clicked down here in the console area, it do Eclipse doesn't know how to run the console. So I'm just gonna click okay. I'm gonna click in my source code and I'm gonna press play. And my program ran. That's it, so now your Windows is set up for Eclipse and it is set up for C and C++. Now, because some of you are going to say, well, Eclipse looks antiquated, it's just not as cool, let's go ahead and install Visual Studio Code. And uh, I'm going to just type Visual Studio Code Download. And the installation is pretty quick, so let's go ahead. To, so the very first one. Now, Visual Studio Code is different than Visual Studio. Visual Studio is Microsoft only. It was developed by Microsoft. It's for really big projects. Visual Studio Code is more for small projects, single files, things like that. So over here on the Windows, I'm going to click on the x64 user installer. Actually, I'm gonna click on the x64 system installer and it's gonna download the Visual Studio installer. I'm gonna close my browser, go to my downloads folder, double click on the Visual Studio Code setup. It asked me, am I sure? Yes, I want to do that. I'm going to accept the license. Go ahead and pick all of the default. Just keep clicking until you install. It's going to go ahead and prepare the install, copy all the files. And then there's one other thing we have to do. Just like with Eclipse, we have to let Visual Studio code that we want to install the C and C++ extensions. So, oh, there it is, it's behind my window. I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna go ahead and select, leave selected launch Visual Studio Code. Click Finish. And here's my Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm gonna click the dark theme. I really like the dark theme. And then I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm just gonna click Mark Done. Okay, let's install the C and C++ tools. I'm gonna click on this little block icon over here on the left and I'm going to type C++ and press enter. Now I don't trust anybody else's extensions other than Microsoft. So I'm just going to install the Microsoft C++ extensions. And in this case it's the first and the third one. And oh, it's also the fifth one. So I'm, anything that says Microsoft with C and C++ I'm going to install. I'm going to click this little install button. I'm going to click this little install button. I'm going to click, oh, that one's automatically clicked. So obviously one of those first two needed that fifth one. And you can see up here this little bar going back and forth. It's in, It was installing. All right, cool. So it looks like it installed it. Now I'm going to click on this little Explore button there. And what you have to do with Visual Studio Code is you have to create a folder. Okay. Now if you already have the folder open or if you already have the folder created, you can just click Open Folder. I'm going to click add a folder and I always like my things organized so I'm going to go into documents I'm going to cl right click on the background and say new folder and I'm going to say visual studio code 
I'm going to open that up. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new folder and I'm going to say CPP. I'm going to open that up and now I'm going to put the name of my project. So I'm going to say my first CPP and click add. Um, oh, it says it doesn't exist there so I have to right click again, say new folder. Oh, what happened? New folder, my first CPP. Double click that. It says, do you trust the authors of that folder? Well, I'm the author, so yes. Now it asks me, do I want to set up my default compiler? So I'm going to select my default compiler, and I'm going to go find the MSYS64, this one right here, the G++, because we're going to be doing C++, right? So I'm going to click on that one and now I have my project. Now I don't have any kind of a file ready yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my first CPP, make sure the little carrot is pointing down. I'm going to click the plus file, so new file. I'm going to call this main.cpp. And Visual Studio Code does or yeah, Visual Studio Code does very little for you. So I'm going to type in my first code. Eclipse did all this for you. And we're going to learn what all of this stuff is. Okay, so I went ahead and typed all of my code. You don't have to know what all this is for right now. I'm going to say file, save. The reason I forgot what it was is because my window isn't big enough and part of the menu was missing. So you have to go to terminal, you have to say run build task dot dot dot. You pick the C++ that you want and I'm going to go ahead and click on this G++ one and it builds it. It says, then you get all of these notices right here. I'm just going to say no to all of them. And it looks like it built okay. So down here it looks, it looks right. So now to actually run it, I'm going to click run, start debugging, or I could say run without debugging. Well, let's try that again. I click in there, run, let's start, start debugging. Let's see what happens Then run start debugging. It says to select the debugger. So I'm going to click on the C++ GDB. Then it asks me, you know, which one I want. I'm going to just click the first one. Let's go to output. I don't see anything there. Terminal. Did it ever say welcome to my program? Oh, there it did. It said welcome to my program. So you can see how Visual Studio Code is a little bit more complicated than Eclipse was to get set up, but we got it working. So that's how you set up your Windows environment for both your C++ compiler, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Eclipse. We're going to stick with Visual Studio, or we're going to click stick with Eclipse just because it's so much easier to set up and use. Uh, and you, later on, you might want to go to Visual Studio Code, or if you're already experienced with Visual Studio Code because you're using HTML, using it for JavaScript or HTML, great. See you at the next video.